So I have some examples today. We'll do a little audience participation. So if I wanted to pound a nail into something, which would I use? <laughs> what do you think? This one or this one? The hammer, somebody said? Good choice. All right. If I wanted to do some dental work, <laughs> which would it be? Would you rather have this or this? Maybe this, right? Yeah, because it's soft eventually. <laughs> if I wanted to measure the length and width of this table, which would work best? The tape measure, right. If I wanted to put nutrients, potassium, and other vitamins into my body, which would work best? <laughs> the hammer, right, exactly. I might be able to hammer this into me, right? <laughs> More on these in a minute. We, um, we're living in a world, unfortunately, which we have a really hard time seeing, I would say, shades of gray, okay? Everything is this or that. It's yes or no. It's Republican or Democrat. It's capitalist or socialist. It's, you know, all this different kinds of very narrow understandings of, of who we are as a culture. But you know, it's almost never that simple, right? Because our culture is made up of all sorts of ideas and people and, and, and thoughts and, and actions, but as humans, as humans we very often want to categorize and, 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 and tribalize and, and hang out with just the people that, that we want to, right? Even happens in churches. The problem with that is that when we, when we decide that we're going to be a certain thing, right? We say, I'm going to be a Lutheran. <laughs> we very often think that that's the goal. That's the end. If I'm just a Lutheran, then I'll understand God. I'll understand Jesus. I'll, I'll, I'll know exactly what I'm supposed to think. I'll, I'll, I'll know exactly what I'm supposed to do. We do that the same thing with political parties. If I'm a Republican, well, I, I've got to believe this. If I'm a Democrat, well, then I've got to believe this. But again, it's not so simple. But when we make these very clear and very strong decisions one way or another, we tend to want to make sure that those things are the point, the goal, the end. If I can just get with the right people who think the right stuff, who do the right things, then life will be great. The problem with that is illustrated in our gospel lesson today. We very often hear, when we hear this lesson, it's God or wealth. But think about it. How many of you like to eat? Anybody? Show of hands, you like to eat? Good, good. Uh, do you grow your own food? Some do, right? A little bit of it. Do you grow every bit of your own food? Probably not. So you're going to have to have some means <laughs> to be able to buy that food. How many of you like living in a house or apartment, something with a roof? <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, exactly. Right. Have you been given a home? Uh, did you make your own home? Did you burrow into a hillside, find a cave? Probably not. So you need some measure of wealth. Even Jesus, even the disciples, right? Paul writes about this all the time. He says it was people who had means, people who had some wealth who were able to give them a place to live, give them a, a food, clothing, so that they could do their ministry. 
So Jesus is no fool. He's not saying that, that money and material goods and things like that are, are wrong. But he doesn't say God or wealth. He says you cannot serve God and wealth. And this is why. Because everything that we are called to do as Christians, everything that we are called to do is meant to point towards Jesus, point towards the kingdom, and be helpful in building up the kingdom in whatever way that we're called to do. Right? So our building is not the thing. (laughs) Our building, we don't ask you for offerings so we can have a pretty building. We ask you for offerings so we can have a place to sit and have worship and have music and have all the things that we do. But it's not just money. It's not just financial wealth that Jesus is talking about. I know I've shared with you a number of times the five T's, time, talent, treasure, testimony, sharing the story, and temple, caring for your body. Which, frankly, if you don't care for your body, the other four are really hard to do. (laughs) So only one of those is treasure. But Jesus is really talking about all of these things. All of the gifts that we have. Everything that is you is not ultimately the goal. So if we want to be healthy, that's good for us, good for our bodies. But it's also good that we can share the good news. If we have some time on our hands... We can, you know, fritter that time away, or we can use it in many ways to serve, to help, to do the kinds of things that care for the kingdom. But if we think that any of those things is ultimately the thing, the goal, we miss our point. Those things are just tools to accomplish a job. Sometimes we use the tools incorrectly. Right? Sometimes we use these things just for our own benefit. Just, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about me. That's like trying to p- p- uh, pound a nail with banana. <laughs> it might work for a while, <laughs> but it doesn't work long term. Two things I want to point out to you. The first is we had the Welka group, as Judy mentioned yesterday. Welka is a great example of this. It's a synod-wide and nationwide organization of, of Lutheran church women But the money they collect doesn't go to making a better and a bigger (laughs) Welka. It goes, as Judy just showed us, it goes to service in Tanzania and India and Montana (laughs) and right here in northern Illinois. So the goal, the money is not the thing, but the money is a tool to be able to serve and build the kingdom. You've probably noticed Lots happened in the last couple of weeks. We got a fancy new shed. Well, we got a fancy new painting on the shed. (laughs) We We got a nice level parking lot, right? But the shed and the parking lot are not the thing. The parking lot's out there so you can be here. The shed is out there in part to store stuff. But now, because of the time, talent, treasure, testimony, and temple, as you're about to see in just a moment, of many people, now that shed has been transformed into just a structure where we keep the lawnmowers, into a witness from this kingdom to the neighborhood and beyond. That's pretty cool. So the shed literally holds tools, (laughs) but it too is a tool for sharing the gospel. Go ahead. Check out this.
thanks to Dave Moyman for that uh, video and to being a certified drone pilot. <laughs> you see what can happen when we don't allow our wealth just to be for us? You see what happens when we say we're not going to use all the gifts that we have just in service of ourselves? <laughs> what happens when we take our wealth, time, talent, treasure, testimony, and temple, what, when we use our wealth and are willing to give it away because we know that God has given us far more than we need, when we use our wealth, that's what can happen. <laughs> that's what happens. So, it's so easy to be caught up in the isms. <laughs> it's so easy to be caught up in thinking if I just know the right people or have enough money or, or join the right club or, or whatever it might be, if that's the goal, then those tools are just not going to be as effective as they could be. But when we use, as an old boss of mine used to say, when we use the right tool for the right job, Right? When we use bananas for eating and hammers for pounding, <laughs> and not the other way around, <laughs> then our wealth, then all we have, can be an incredibly effective tool for sharing the gospel. So I encourage you this week, if, if, if this message kind of resonates with you, if you feel like you really are hearing this message, think about the tools that you have. You all have some. Some have great voices and, and instrumental ability. Some have wealth, you know, financial wealth. Others have time in which they can serve all sorts of places. Whatever it might be, use those tools in ways that build up the kingdom and you will not be disappointed. Not at all. But do not use this for dentistry. <laughs> Amen.